Viper 0.3.2 and above now supports dynamic array. Let's take a look. I'll show you how to declare dynamic array as state variables and I'll also show you how to use it as function input and as function outputs. Okay, let's get started. For this example, I'll create a state variable, a dynamic array of uint having max size 3. I'll name this state variable nums and to declare dynamic array, you would start with dyn array brackets and inside the brackets you'll need to specify two things the type of the array and the maximum length of this array so for example we'll create a dynamic array of uint 256 and the maximum size this array can have we'll say it is 3. this means that this array can have a length of 0 1 2 or 3 however it cannot exceed 3 so the length cannot be 4 there cannot be four elements in this array. So next, let's see some examples of operation that we can perform on this dynamic array. For this example, I'll show you some operations that we can perform on this dynamic array inside the constructor. So I'll say external, and then we'll define a constructor by typing def two underscores init two underscores parentheses. So first, let's see how to insert some numbers into this array. To do that, we'll use the function append. So we'll type self, since this is going to be a state variable, dot nums dot append parentheses. And since this dynamic array is a uint256, we'll put in some number, for example, 11. We can also do this again. So next, we'll put 22. And we can do this again one more time, 33. However, we cannot insert another element for example, 44, because up to this point, we already have three elements. If you add another element, this array will now have four elements, but we set over here that this dynamic array can have a maximum of three elements. So if you do this, then this code will fail. So I'll comment this out. And that is how you insert elements into a dynamic array. Another operation that you might want to know is how to pop an element from this dynamic array. Calling pop will remove the last element from this array. Let's take a look. So again, we'll say self.nums.pop. Pop removes the last element. So when this part of the code executes, the last element being 33 will be removed. And the length of the array will be equal to 2. You can also reset the array by setting it to an empty array. For example, we'll say self.nums is equal to an empty array. After this point, we had two elements. Here, we're resetting it to an empty array. So the length of the array here will be equal to zero. There are no more elements in this dynamic array. Now here, we set the num state variable to an empty array, but however, it doesn't have to be empty. For example, if we type self.nums is equal to one, two, three. Then here, we're saying that this array has three elements, one, two, and three. And that is some operations that you can perform on a dynamic array in Viper. Next, I'm going to show you some examples of how to use a dynamic array as function inputs and as outputs. For the first example, we'll write a function that takes in a dynamic array as input, appends some new elements, and then returns a new dynamic array. Let's take a look. We'll declare this function as external, and we'll also declare it as peer. I'll name this function examples it's going to take in a single input of dynamic array i'll name the input x is and it will be a dynamic array of again uint 256 having maximum length of five so this array can have up to five elements and then we'll return a dynamic array having a maximum length of eight i'll type dyn array again uint 256 maximum length eight First, we'll declare a dynamic array. I'll name it ys, dyn array. This will be of type uint, uint256, having the maximum length 8. This will be the array that we'll return. So I'll type return ys. Now, let's do something interesting with this array. I'll first initialize this to 1, 2, and 3. So it has three elements. And then we'll copy all of the elements from excess over to ys and then we'll return it. The dynamic array xs 
has a maximum of five elements, we initialize ys to have three elements. So five plus three, ys can have a maximum of eight elements. We'll copy each element and the input xs. So I'll type four x in x's ys dot append x. And that completes this example. This was an example of a function where it takes in a dynamic array as input and then also returns a dynamic array as output. Let's take a look at another example. For the next example, we will write a function where it takes in a dynamic array of addresses and returns an address where all of the addresses are non-zero. So again, we'll say this function will be external and peer and I'll name this function filter. It's going to take in a single input of dynamic array of addresses. So I'll name it ADDRS, a dynamic array of type address, maximum length, five. From this input, we'll filter out all of the addresses that are zero addresses and then return it. So for the output, the maximum size of the array is also five. This will happen when all of the addresses from the input are non-zero. So to declare the output, I'll type dyn array of type address maximum length 5. First I'll declare a dynamic array of addresses. I'll name it non-zeros. This is the array that we're going to be returning. dyn array of type address maximum length 5 and we'll initialize it to an empty array. From the input we'll only copy addresses that are non-zero. So I'll type for addr and addresses from the input if ADDR is not equal to zero address. Zero address is a constant available in Viper and I didn't have to define it or import it from anywhere. So if the address is not equal to zero address, then we'll append it to the non-zeros dynamic array by typing non-zeros dot append ADDR. And then after the for loop, we'll return the non-zeros array. Return non zeros and that completes the function filter it takes in an input of dynamic array of addresses and from the input it only returns the addresses that are non-zero these were two examples of how to use dynamic array as inputs and as output lastly let's compile this contract i'll open my terminal and then check my viper version is greater than or equal to 0.3.2 by typing viper dash dash version I already have Viper 0.3.3 installed, so I'll be able to use dynamic arrays. If you have not installed Viper yet, you can install it by typing pip install Viper equals equals 0.3.3. Once you have Viper installed, let's compile this contract by typing Viper followed by the name of the contract. For this example, I've named the contract dyn array.by and then I'll hit enter and the contract compiled and it returned the bytecode of the contract. 